Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making buttermilk and self-rising flour. Now I know that sounds kind of strange, but the two most asked questions I get in the comments are what can I use instead of buttermilk and what if I don't have self-rising flour? So I'm going to kind of address both of those questions in this video and show you what you can use instead of or what if you don't have. Uh, buttermilk substitute is pretty easy. You need a cup of milk and a tablespoon of vinegar or lemon juice. They will both work. And this is not exactly the same thing as buttermilk, but it will come out very similar. Buttermilk is actually cultured where the acidity here is going to come from your vinegar. But the vinegar does a very similar thing in your baking to what buttermilk does. So you can use this. And you just add your acid, whether you're using vinegar or um, lemon juice, to your milk and stir it and let it sit about five minutes. And then we're gonna come back and check on it. Now, I have not tried this with any non-dairy milk. I don't know if it will work with almond milk and oat milk and soy milk and all that stuff or not. If you try it, please leave a comment so that other people will know if it works or not. Um, I kinda think maybe it will, but like I said, I haven't tried it. And the other substitute I get asked a lot about is self-rising flour. What is self-rising flour and what if I don't have self-rising flour? Self-rising flour is basically either plain or all-purpose flour. Um, some people call it plain flour. Some people call it all-purpose. That's the same thing with baking powder and salt added to it. So if you have a recipe that calls for self-rising flour, you don't need to add salt to it. It's already in your flour. And if you don't have self-rising flour, of course you have to add it. And the self-rising flour also has the baking powder in it, which is a leavening agent and makes your bread or whatever you're baking rise up. So per one cup of plain or all-purpose flour, you wanna add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one half teaspoon of salt. If your recipe calls for two cups of flour and it's for self-rising flour and you don't have any self-rising flour, you want to add a tablespoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt. <clears throat> and all you do is just dump that into your flour and you give it a little stir. Now in a lot of recipes that call for plain or all-purpose flour, it will call for baking powder, baking soda, salt, you do want to add those things into your flour before you add it to your recipe. So what self-rising flour does is it just kind of saves you that step. You don't have to add those two ingredients to the recipe. That literally is all there is to the self-rising flour. Um, you can't make a recipe that calls for self-rising flour without adding that baking powder and that salt to it. If you do, it will not come out the plainer the all-purpose flour, do, they do not have those ingredients in them. And like I said, that is what makes whatever you're baking rise up. And the salt aids in that process and it also adds an enormous amount of flavor. Now, if you're on a low salt diet, you can cut the salt back. In all your recipes, you can use the plain flour or all-purpose and cut the salt back a little bit. Use a quarter teaspoon per cup and you'll still get okay flavor and it will still rise up, but it will reduce the salt. So if you're on a low, sodi low sodium diet, use plain flour instead of self-rising. <coughs> Let's see, I don't think this is quite set. Well, it's starting to. Um, it will continue to thicken. And like I said, you wanna leave it here for about five minutes, but you can see already we're getting some little chunks in here. While we're waiting on this for just another minute, I want to share Proverbs 18.21 with you. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 
Our words are so very important. They literally have the power of death and life in them. And it's, they not only affect the people we're speaking to, but they affect us. So think about your words, especially when you're stressed or maybe you're upset about something because words are very hard to take back. And while they can be forgiven, they are not so easily forgotten. Just remember how powerful those words are and how important they are, not just to other people, but to you. Your words affect your life and everybody around you. So make sure they reflect God's love in you. Okay, our milk has been sitting here for about five minutes and you can see there are quite a few more lumps in it now, or at least I hope you can see that on the camera. And it looks very much like buttermilk and it will continue to get thicker for a few more minutes. Um, you do want to give it at least five minutes before you add it into whatever you're um, baking. And what this does is the acid in the vinegar or your cultures in your buttermilk, it will actually break down the wheat in what you're baking and it will make it lighter and fluffier and it changes the texture of your baked goods. That's why so many recipes call for buttermilk. And also if you're using it to uh, mar in a marinade like for chicken, that acid breaks down the meat and it tenderizes it. Um, we did a buttermilk fried chicken video and you can use this milk with the vinegar in it and it will work and it will tenderize it or lemon juice, either one, and it will be just as good as the buttermilk fried chicken. It's the same, does the same thing to your meats. So if you need this for a marinade or for bacon, this works just fine. And there you can see it really looks like buttermilk now. I want to thank y'all so much for joining us the Hillbilly Kitchen. I hope these little tips or substitutions make your baking easier, especially since things are so expensive now and we are still having shortages and they're always out of something when you go to the store. This gives you a few more options. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.